ChatGBT, in order to build a gated recurrent unit for predicting the price of crypto moving forward. So I'm going to just ask ChatGPT to do it and then it's going to do it for me. Watch this. Code me a gated recurrent unit that predicts the next period's price, next period's price of Bitcoin. Here is a sample of my data. Now this data, it's really hard to get, but it's, um, it's one minute data here. And if you need it, let me know. But here we go. I'm gonna paste it in there. And that's my sample data. Did this copy correctly? Yes, it did. Okay, perfect. So I'm sorry, but I am not able to write a complete code for you as it will require a lot of time and resources. How I can, However, I can provide you with a general idea of how to approach this task. A gated recurrent unit, GRU, is a type of recurrent neural network, RNN, that can be used for time series forecasting. Here's an example of how you could use a GRU to predict the next period's price of Bitcoin. So I was just mentioning this here on my Twitter that I was doing this today. Um, I'm actually going to make two videos today, gated recurrent, make a gated recurrent unit, and then also a convolutional neural network. So I'll probably split this into two videos. So make sure to stick around. Uh, this is at MoonDev on YouTube if you want to see more content there as well. But as you can see, it tells us what to do. It says import the necessary libraries, load in the data, split the data into training and testing, define the GRU unit using TensorFlow library, then train the model, then use the train model to predict, make predictions on new data, which is pretty nice. So, and it's doing the coding for us, which is awesome. What I want to do here is I want to go ahead and get this data that we have into a, into CoLab. So let me reveal in Finder, and then I'm going to pull it in here while we have ChatGPT coding for us, which is unreal that we can just sit here and do other things while it codes for us. So let's go up here. It's important to note that this is a very simple, simplified example. Okay. Normalizes the prices. It doesn't look like it did it that good of a job. It didn't actually make the GRU. Please show me an example. An example in code of creating that GRU that predicts Bitcoin price. I already sent you my sample data. I already sent you my sample data. And you can see the data has been pulled in. I apologize, but as a language model, I do. Seems like they went ahead and updated this a bit. It's not coding as well. However, I can provide you with a sample code. It says, since I'm a language model, blah, blah, blah. Import NumPy as MP. Okay, here we go. Now we're doing it. This is what I wanted to see. Good job. Now we have the data here, so I can go ahead and I'll copy path for now. Close this up. And I'll just put the path here. I'll say data equals that. Well, I should probably do pd.read. I'm just going to put it here for notes for now and paste it in. Boom. So we're pulling in the data. So that's the first thing we want to do. And then we convert the date time column to a numerical format. And then we normalize the prices. And then we split the data into training and testing sets. So 80% will, we will train on and then the rest, which is 20%, we will test on. And then we'll define the input and output data. So this is pretty amazing. Every time I use this, my mind is blown a little bit more. And, you know, I like to say that maybe this won't replace coders or professionals right away, but the people that the coders that do use it to their advantage are going to replace the coders that don't. So uh, I know there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there that say that chat GPT and all this stuff, all this AI stuff isn't actually good, but okay, we'll see. We'll see who, uh, who advances faster because I just coded all this up. Well, chat GPT did, and I just sat here. 
I just have to ask the right questions. So I really think there's going to be a skill here in asking the right questions. So I load in the data here and then we're going to convert the, it to a date time numerical format here. So we'll do that. Perfect. Then we're going to normalize the prices. So this type, this is just unreal to me that it spits out all this code and for the most part it works, but of course there are some parts that don't work. So let me go ahead and paste this and we're going to split the data into training and test sets. So now we can train the model on 80% and then test on the other percent, which is 20. Then we want to define the input and output data. So let's copy it here and paste it in. Define the input and output data, X train, train data. And then we want to define the model. paste this in and see if this works. Okay. Wow. Looking good. And now we want to compile the model. So we're going to use the atom optimizer loss mean squared error. And then we want to train the model. So let's do that. Let's train the model and let's see if this works. Okay. Perfect. So we ran into an error and this is where to me, this is where most of the learning happens because, you know, it, it's kind of giving us the cheat code here, giving us all the answers. But then when we run into an error, this is where we actually learn. So this is why I like to do this on YouTube, because at the end of the day, I can just sit here and do this by myself. Uh, you know, I build training algorithms every single day. And this is one of my focuses here in 2023 is machine learning for trading. And I could just do this alone. That's fine. But I would rather do it here uh, and just record it because then maybe I can help you out. And if I help you out just to spark a new idea, that's unreal because, you know, my time has now just been duplicated and it's just helping the world, which is awesome. So if you want to learn everything, I know I'm flying through this. I have an algo trade camp here that shows you, actually teaches you how to do this stuff, how to algo trade and all that. So, you know, at a minimum, make sure to follow me on Twitter, but let's go back here and say, Hey, this is my air. I get this air. How do I fix? Just show me the code. Just show me the code that needs to be fixed. Not the don't write the whole code again. Don't write the entire code again. And there we go, po post it in our error. And then this is where we learn. So the error message you're getting suggests that the input shape of the model is incompatible with the shape of the data you're trying to fit. The error message specifically says that the input shape of the GRU layer is none, none four, which means it expects a 3D tensor with the first dimension being the batch size, the second dimension being the time step, and the third dimension being the number of features. It seems that the input shape of your data, none four, which means it's a 2D tensor, with the first dimension being the batch size and the second dimension being the number of features. To fix this, you need to add a time dimension to your data so that it matches the expected input shape of the GRU layer. You can do this by reshaping your input data using the reshape function from the NumPy library before passing it into the model. So X train, X test. Okay, we'll, we'll paste this in, but this will add a time dimension of size one to your data. So the shape of the input data will be none one four, which matches the input shape of the GRU layer. You can also change the input shape of your model as well by adding the batch input shape none one four to the GRU layer. You should now be able to fit the model without giving the error message. Okay, so I think it's saying either or. So I'm just going to do the first one. Let's go ahead to X train X test. And maybe we'll put it right here because it looks like we have our X train and test here. So let's just uh, let's run this cell. I think that should work and then run this cell and then compile the model and then train the model. Let's see if it works now. I think it's working. There we go. So now we're on epoch one out of 10. Looks like it's going to be about 40 seconds per epoch. 
So that's going to be about four minutes. But during that time, we can say, hey, how would I evaluate this model? No, actually, I know how to evaluate it. But I would like to, I would like to see if it tells me something different. I, I would usually evaluate it by going to look at my other models here and seeing, hey, I got the MSE over here on this LSTM model. And I also have this R squared and then the MAE. And then I know there's a RMSE too, just because I've been making making these videos and I, I, I do this every single day. So at this point, if, if you've been watching as well, um, you're probably familiar with that, to, that being a great way of that evaluating models. But I wanna see specifically for this type of model, is there a different way? So how would I evaluate this model to see if it's good? And then let's see, let's just learn here. There are several ways to evaluate a model's performance depending on the type of problem you're trying to solve and the type of data you have. Here are a few examples of how you could evaluate the performance of the GRU model you created. So the MSC, mean squared error, this is a commonly used metric for evaluating the performance of regression models. It measures the average squared difference between the predicted values and the true values. You can calculate the MSC for your model using the mean squared error function from sklearn metrics model module. And then again, the mean absolute error. This is Another commonly used metric for evaluating the performance of regression models, it measures the average absolute difference between the predicted values and the true values. You can calculate the MAE for your model using mean absolute error function from, again, the sklearn. Then the R2. This is a common metric used for evaluating the performance of regression models. It measures the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variable. It ranges from zero to one with one indicating a perfect fit. You can calculate the R2 squared using the same, same thing. So we're gonna do this. I want to say mean squared error. Let's copy this over because I wanna make this file really good and then I'll throw it inside of the bootcamp so you can have access to it. Let's go ahead and see if we can add text here. Maybe down here, yep. Model evaluation. And then let's go ahead and put that text in there and run it. And I wanna go ahead and now put in the code. So let's go up here and get that code. Copy the code and paste it in here. I'm not gonna run it yet because it's not gonna work. We have to wait for it to train. It's pretty cool that it's the AI is building <laughs> an AI for us. <laughs> the AI is building a machine learning model for us. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm fascinated by this stuff. If you like this type of video, just let me know below and I, I can make more of this because either way, like I said, I'm gonna be using machine learning all throughout the year and I'm, I'm happy to share it because I feel like there's not enough people sharing this information online. And if people aren't sharing it, then, you know, why wouldn't I? I get the whole like algo trading is pretty secretive and we don't want to share alpha, but I actually, I'm just trying it something different. Like I've only been in this industry for two, three years now and I've seen everybody so secretive about things. So I want to make sure to just, you know, everybody's zigging. I want to zag. And that's the whole basis behind me actually showing you what I'm doing each day. So you can see the path that I'm on. You can see the algorithms I build. And you can see the the things I learn, the mistakes I make. Because if, if I can put this into like a nice 30 minute video and you watch it even on 1.5 or 2x speed, well, that 30 minutes of me coding and me thinking and showing all of these steps I'm taking to become a better algorithmic trader, that 30 minutes can turn into 15 minutes for you and it could, uh, you know, light a uh, light bulb in your brain that just makes you take off and do absolutely wonderful things. So that's the goal here. Let's check in while this is running and we're waiting for this model to finish and then we're going to evaluate it after it. Let's check in over here on what's actually going in the real market as it is, what is it, nine, so eight. So we've got a couple hours until open and you can see pre-market is down 30.34.
percent. Who knows what's going to go on today? It's been very volatile. It looks like we're trending a little bit downwards, but I don't think that really matters on the ES. Let's check the four hour here. You can see we've had a crazy few days, which has been fun. Um, my algos have been doing pretty good. So um, I, I actually give away seven algos, not so much that so you can just run them, but more so that you can learn from them and then build your own strategy. So I try to just give a, a good ver array of different algorithms that you can learn how to build any of your own ideas into algos. So in the algo trade camp, it's essentially step-by-step -step actual teaching of how to do this from, from coding, even if you don't know how to code. I was a self-taught coder as well. I didn't go to school for this. I don't believe you need to, but all the way from learning how to code to you know intro of algorithmic trading machine learning all the trading basics coding the algo orders and everything you need essentially everything i wish i had so you can get that with the link below and you actually have to search my twitter if you want to find me on twitter it's moondev on youtube moondev on yt but let's go ahead and say what other what other ways can i evaluate the effectiveness -ness of this model with the goal of predicting the next period's price. And let's just keep learning from here because, uh, you know, we do have this model training. So that's pretty awesome that we were able to get to that point. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about this. So. We're at Epoch 8 out of 10, so we're gonna be done in about two minutes here. So here are a few other ways you could evaluate the effectiveness of the GRU model. Okay, plotting predicted versus actual values. I definitely wanna do that. So I'm gonna copy this over, and I wanna say that here down at the bottom, and let's see if we can just put in some text here. I wanna do that one for sure. Plotting the prediction error. Another way to visualize the performance of your model is to plot the prediction error. And this one that I really want to do is plotting the predicted versus the actual values. And then we can do some walk forward validation, a rolling window, out of sample metrics, and then back testing. Let's go ahead and see if we finished up here. We should be just about done. Okay, we're on epoch 9 of 10. So just about 47 seconds, I would say. Well, it says. I'm not saying anything. I just code. I just code. I don't make predictions. I'm not one of those dudes that's like, oh my goodness, buy this, buy that. Nope. I just code and let the computer make the predictions for me. And um, yeah, it's pretty fun. I have a great time with this. So if you want to see more machine learning, just let me know if there's any types of machine learning that I haven't covered that you want me to cover. And I will make sure to put all the code inside the bootcamp. So you'll have access to it. And then you can also join our Discord at any time. There should be a link for that below. We've got about six seconds till this is finished. Let's see if it fully fits. So this is history, train the model, history. What else do we have here? Scroll back up because I think there's a little bit more code. Yeah, predictions. We need to take the predictions. We train the model. Now we need to make the predictions. So let's go ahead and put code here, make the predictions. And this should be just about finished here. 52 seconds, 10 out of 10. Let's just give it a couple of seconds. Maybe it's, I don't think it's gonna run through again. Okay, there we go, it's done. So let's make the predictions and then let's print out predictions. Okay, so it's making the predictions here. And I wanna see with the predictions, predictions code you sent, how do I see only the next bar of predicted price? Because the predictions predicted price.
here is the code you sent like you're a human okay perfect so now I want to see exactly you can see NAN for all of these so I want to see exactly the next bar and see how it works so the code provided predictions equals model dot predict x test is making predictions on the entire test set not just the next bar to obtain so I'm gonna write that down this makes predictions on on the entire test set not just next bar so to obtain the predictions for the next bar you can simply select the first prediction from the array so that's pretty easy to do you can do this by indexing the predictions array using the zero index notation and I can say predictions for the next bar okay so let's run that again so that saves and then this will give you the predicted value for the next bar and this could be pretty handy right because if we get the next like few bars then we can trade off of it I can put it into one of my algos and say hey if this is a good model then we can trade off of it so let's go ahead and see what this says this will give you the predicted value for the next bar alternatively you can use the x test to make a prediction for the next bar okay we won't do that one we'll just use this one and I want to get the next three bars so now that I know the logic I can do that pretty easily predictions for next three bars and if the price is higher then you know that's a good indicator to long if it's lower then it's a good indicator to short right so let's say next bar prediction um, how would I say this second second next bar prediction equals predictions one and then let's do the same thing but for third bar and remember we're start with zero so second and third oops third and what we'll do here is just duplicate this two times for second bar next uh, what did I call this second next bar that doesn't even make sense but whatever you don't have to make sense to do this as long as you understand and let's go ahead and put second next bar here and third next bar here I feel like it says NAN though so I wonder why and we'll fix that yeah it shows NAN okay so Mm, for some reason for some reason all of my predictions show N A or NAN how do I fix this below is an example of my predictions so we have some sort of error here that shows the NAN values in your predictions indicate that there is some problem with the model or the data that is causing the model to produce undefined results. There are a few possible causes for this issue. Invalid data. It's, uh, it's possible that the data you're using to train the test and test the models contains missing values such as NAN or infinity. This can cause the model to produce undefined results when trying to make predictions. You can check your data for invalid values using np is non or np is inf functions from the numpy library and remove or replace and then overfitting if the model is overfitting to the training data it may not be able to generalize well to new data and produce undefined results you can try to address overfitting by using techniques such as regularization early stopping or by increasing the size of your data bad parameters your models architecture and hyperparameters could be the reason for the poor predictions okay diverging I would recommend by starting your by checking your data for invalid values okay let's check okay okay show me how to check for invalid or not 
and where do I put it? Perfect. So this is pretty amazing, right? Like, okay, sure, it failed, kind of, but now we can just say, hey, you know, this is the problem, and I need a solution. And this is like having your super smart junior coder here, just always like trained on everything. And this is just mind blowing to me. Let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. ES1 looks like it's going down a little bit, but not really significantly. DXY looks like it's going up, so that's the dollar. DXY has had a rough couple months. Okay, let's read what is going on over here. Sorry, I, I get distracted. Here's an example of how you can use the np.isNon function to check for NAN values in your data. This code will check if any of the elements in the X train, Y train, X test, and Y test arrays are NAN and it will return a boolean value true. If you would like to check for infinite values, you can use, okay, once you find, okay, let's just run this then. Let's go up here and where should we put this? NP is non Y train, reshape. I think we should put it right here. And that's a guess. And we'll run that. True, true. So we got, there is nons. Okay, there are any ends. I ran that code. True for any ends. How do I fix it? These, this is the output. Below is the output, the output of the code you sent. This is so amazing. Like I'm just bossing this little AI around and it's fixing things for me. I just can't believe it. <laughs> if you are getting the true when writing the code to check for NAN, it means there are NAN values in your train data. Here are a few ways to fix it. Remove rows with NAN values. One way to fix this problem is to remove all rows. I don't want to do that. You can use Dropna. I don't want to do that one. I'd rather use the mean. So look at that. Like just by doing this repetitively, like I already know what it's going to do. Repre replace NAN values with a placeholder. Another way to fix this is the problem is to placeholder. For example, you can use the mean. Okay, let's do that. Let's copy this data here. Interpolation. Okay. Let's do let's there's no notes on this one. So replace NANs with the mean and run it. Oh no. Let's stop this. Okay, it's done. When I run the code below. I get get this error. Okay, so let's grab the code. I have everything implemented, right? The error message you're getting, attribute error, numpy, ND array object has no attribute filna is occurring because the filna method is a pandas method and not an MP array. Therefore, you cannot use it directly on NumPy. Here's an alternative way to replace NAN values with the mean in a NumPy array. So why did you tell me the other way? That's okay. I forgive you. I forgive you. I'll let you slide one time. But you should have known that. Perfect. So we got this going. We're actually going to have to retrain this, but oh well. I, I got time and I can ask mad questions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So let's just run this now. This is different. Okay. I get this error. Stop generating. I love that new feature. When I run this code, maybe I should have done this earlier. 
Let's try that actually before I even do it. Let's say reshape it first. So let's paste it here. Let's run this. Okay. Nope, it didn't fix it. So let's delete it. You delete this. I need to open it up more. There it is. Okay, so we've deleted it. When I run this code, so I love this because I can just pass in the errors and I don't have to think about it, I don't have to Google it. And just to figure out the error message you're getting, the value error cannot reshape or array size, blah, 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 is because the reshape function is trying to reshape the input data into a 3D array with dimensions, blah, 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 one, one, but the total number of elements in your input data is blah, blah, blah which is not divisible by the reshape dimensions. In this case, it looks like the reshape is trying to reshape the data into a 3D array with one batch size, one time step, and one feature. But the number of elements in your data does not match the reshape dimensions. It seems that the problem is with the X train, it should be a 3D array, batch size, time step, feature. It's important to note that the reshape function can only reshape an array that the total number of elements remains the same. You should check the size of your input data. You may need to, okay, show me the code. Please. You may need to check the shape of your data and adjust the reshape dimensions accordingly. Also, okay, so here's an example of how you can reshape your input data to match the expected dimensions of the model. So you get the number of time steps, time steps equals look back, then you reshape the data, okay? So let's go here. Say code. In this example, the time steps variable is set to the value of look, look back, which is the number of time steps to use as input for the model. The reshape function is then used to reshape the input data into a 3D array with dimensions, batch size, time, steps, one. You can use this reshape data as input to your model. Please note that you should use the value of time steps for both the training and testing. So let's put that here. Look back. There's no variable. I have no variable. There, variable. Jeez, in my code called look back. You can see the error here. It says like, what is look back? I apologize for the confusion. It looks like look back variable is not defined in your code. The look back variable is typically used to determine the number of time steps to use as input for the model. It is the number of historical data points to use as input for the model. For example, if you want the model to predict the next value based on the previous 10 data points, then the look back would be set to 10. To fix this, you need to define the number of time steps you want to use as input for the model and use this value to reshape your input data. Here's an example of how you can reshape your input data with a specific number of time steps. Okay, so this replaces that. So let's just paste it in here. Time steps, boom, boom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so we got another error, and this is where we learn. We never fail, we just learn. I get this error now. I hope this is helpful. Let me know below if, if you think this is helpful to see me go through these errors with ChatGPT. I know for me, it's very helpful, and my whole thesis here is if it's helpful for me, then it's probably going to be helpful for somebody else. So why not just put it on YouTube? It's free. The error message you're getting, value error cannot reshape the size of blah, blah, blah into shape, blah, 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 is because the reshape function is trying to reshape your input data into a 3D array with dimension, blah, 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 blah. But the total number of elements, it seems that the problem is with the shape of X-Train. It should be a 3D shape, okay? You should check the size. Please check the shape. You may want to try reducing the size of your input. Show me in code. Please, got to be nice, got to be nice. Here's an example of how you can check the shape of your input data and adjust the reshape dimensions accordingly. Okay, so let's do this. Let's delete this. Let's 
well, check the total. So total elements equals that times that if total. Element, OK, I like this. Check if the total number of elements is divisible by the reshaped dimensions. X test equals NP dot reshape X test input data shaped successfully else print unable to reshape the data please check the shape of your data okay so it doesn't seem like it's gonna fix it but we'll see what happens I think it's just gonna print that it can't unable to reshape the data okay so let's go ahead and say I get this output oh it's still going no I get this output how do I fix this in code so shape of the data is that and the shape of the test is that. So this is the train 44, 478,000 lines for testing. The output you're getting is because the input is already in the 3D shape, which with dimensions of blah, blah, blah for X train and blah, blah, blah for X test. The first dimension represents the number of data points. The second dimension represents the number of time steps. And the third dimension represents the number of features. Since your input data is already in the correct shape, you don't need to reshape it again. You can remove the reshape code and proceed with training. Sweet. Okay. So if I don't need to do that, I'll delete all that. But remember we had an error here, right here. So I'll just say, uh, this is the error I get but now but now when I but now when I run the following code I get this error so paste that in and this is the code I try to run paste this code in now and Let's go ahead and do that. So I, I said this is the code I'm trying to run, and that's the error that I'm getting. I apologize for the confusion. It seems I misunderstood the format of the input data. The error you are trying, you're getting, is because the reshape function is trying to reshape the data into a 3D shape with dimensions, blah 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 blah, blah for X test and X train which is not possible given the size of the data. You should not reshape the data if it is already in correct format as it is in your case. You should remove the following lines of code. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry, I did that again. Well, I'm just gonna delete it then, peace. Delete, bye. Okay, and proceed with defining the training and training your model using the input data in the current format please also please make sure that your data contains no nan values okay i think we already confirmed that but let's just do it again because just to be safe code here paste false perfect so now we'll run this and that looks good let's compile it that looks good and let's train the model now hi there we go. So now it's training and we can just wait for it to finish up here. And while we do that, let's uh, check in on this. Just want to remind you that this probably won't be here forever because just because I'll probably run out of steam at some point on making videos. So you'll get access to it forever. But, you know, it's a pretty secretive industry. I want to share as much as I can for now. But at some point, I'm going to get tired of it. So. I'll keep building by myself, but I would highly recommend jumping in as soon as possible. And let's see what's going on here. Uh, this is what we're working on today, Mundev on YT. We're building the gated recurrent unit because it was suggested to be a really good model for predicting price. And after this is done training, we can keep moving forward. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. What time is it? It's 9.30 almost. So. Where I'm at, that is 8.30 in Eastern time. So the market does open in about an hour. So I like to keep an eye on it for the first hour. It's a little conflicting with the times I make, uh, make, make these movies. And 
you know, oh well. That's why I like to kind of share this as well. I just keep an eye on it. I don't really trade by hand, but I like to keep an eye on this just to make sure if I need to tweak any of my bots or anything. Like if something went crazy, like the VIX went crazy or something. This pretty much looks at the volatility of the entire market and that kind of affects crypto. So we're on Epoch 3 out of 10 here. I'm looking forward to seeing if this makes predictions. I don't know, maybe I should cut this video now. I know it's been getting kind of long. Let me know if you want me to keep making more videos on machine learning. I really love this stuff. I think it's gonna be very powerful in my algorithms here in 2023 and, and on. So I'll make sure to put all the code inside of the camp and uh, feel free to join our Discord as well. See a ton of people are probably a thousand algo traders in here and it's just growing and growing and eventually that will also be closed just because you know we when we get too many people in there it's just gonna be too much noise so I just want to make sure it's a good crew of people and once that is that that is that so while this loads let's go ahead and see what I want to see how to do this um, well, I wrote it here, actually. I want to see how to code this. How to plot. How do you plot the predicted versus actual values? The predicted versus actual values from this model. This model. And this will be super interesting because visually this is probably the easiest way to see it but you can plot the predicted versus actual values using matplotlib a popular plotting library in python here's an example of how you can do that let's just start coding this out because i want to get some keystrokes in here import matplotlib dot pi plot matplot lib i should probably just leave the coding to chat gbc as PLT and then we want to make the predictions and then we want to say y pred equals model dot predict I would say the only downside of chat GPT is I copy and paste too much and for me to really get better at coding I need to improve my speed of typing and I was actually a plucker prior to this so before learning how to code I was looking down at the keyboard so I, I have to make sure that I keep up my practice here plot y pred do we have y pred label equals yeah we have y pred right there but do we have y test predicted and then plt dot legend and then plt dot show I'm really excited for this so plt dot prop where did y pred come from do we have y pred here I don't see a y pred but it also isn't giving as so uh, I see the y pred but I don't see the y test Maybe it was up here. Let's do Y test. Oh, we do have Y test, of course. We're using it everywhere, right? Let's go ahead and see if we can find it up here. Yeah, we split it right here. Y test, so this is the closed values. Oh, awesome. It, I love that it did this for me and I didn't even, I just overlooked it. It just took the closed prices, which is nice up here. And I want to do a quick review while this is running through just in case I went too fast because I know I go fast through this stuff and I actually I do my teaching in Algo Trade Camp and then I just show you the day to day here in my on my YouTube. So people ask what's the difference between the camp and the YouTube. Well, YouTube is you get to see my day to day, which is awesome in its own right. Right. And in the camp, I actually show you like I teach. Right. So. We first imported the necessary packages and then we pulled in the data. As I've mentioned multiple times, I have a, a data source for one minute data 
and then we converted the data into a numerical format using pandas and then we normalize the prices so I just want to make sure you can screenshot this if you need to and then we split the data into training and testing sets so this is pretty much saying hey 80% of the data we want to train the model on and the other 20% we want to test the model on and then we define the input and the output so the input is open high low and the volume and the Y train is the close value or are the close values X test then we import numpy numpy as MP and we check for NANs because if there's any NANs it's interesting it wrote this twice maybe I wrote that twice but it's false 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 if there's any NANs we have to put in numbers for those NANs or else the model doesn't work and we'll see if this fixed it because remember we already ran this model we trained it it took like 10 minutes or something and now we're doing it again and we replaced all the NANs to fix it with the mean value so hopefully that works and if not then it's probably just overfit so let's go ahead and add that here to here I'll finish this first um, and then we define the model model tf.keras sequential we use GRU 64 units and one layer and then we compiled the model using optimizer of atom and mean squared error loss now I want to put this text here because I think this is gonna be super beneficial for you know everybody here on YouTube and inside the bootcamp because it describes how wow just look at all this we've done with chat GPT this is amazing it describes what problems may be causing the NANs so I'm sure that will happen with if you're training a model like at some point so let's go ahead and say copy all of this hopefully that doesn't fly down so if we get NANs as the predicted So now we have a bunch of information here, and I should probably do this more often. Is just save this this information that we we get because this is like valuable, and someday ChatGPT is not going to be free, and I'm gonna be pissed if I didn't save all this information. So, and then we're gonna after this, we're gonna go ahead and make the predictions for the three bars. You can see it's NANs right now, and then we'll evaluate the model down here. And I think I'm going to make a another video evaluating all models. Let me know if you want to see that. I'll evaluate all the models that we've created. We've created an LSTM, an ARIMA, an LSTM with a CNN, and now we're doing a GRU. And I think we've done a couple others, but I want to evaluate them all against each other. So it looks like it's done training, which is awesome. Now this is the moment of truth. If it says any ends again, that's going to suck. But hey, this is what it is, and we will just keep moving. And we'll figure it out okay there we got the actual the actual predictions here which is awesome but the weird thing is that it gave me predictions in like 0.12 I don't even know what that was referring to so we'll ask chat GPT let's say hey boom so the predictions let's jump down to the bottom here the predictions I got from the model are these my question is how are these Bitcoin predictions when the price is about let's see what the price fed it we fed in fifty six thousand well it is more than twenty thousand what does this mean
the predictions you're getting from the model are likely not actual Bitcoin prices. It's likely the model is predicting the change in Bitcoin prices, i.e. the difference in price between the current time step. Okay. Rather than the actual prices. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So let's go ahead here and say, let's add that because that's going to be super helpful. So the predictions you're getting from the model, okay, I already wrote that, i.e. the difference between the price and the current time step rather than the actual prices themselves the values you're seeing such as 0.12 are likely to change in price in in percentage rather than the actual price in dollars this can happen if you scale the data before training the model and didn't use unscale before making predictions oh we need to unscale the data to get the actual price you would need to unscale the data okay this is really helpful i've definitely run into this before. I've been doing machine learning for a couple years now. I'm obviously not a pro at it, but I've definitely scaled and then unscaled data. So let's go ahead and unscale it. Show me how to show me how to unscale the data before making the predictions. Okay, so I like, I'll keep these predictions in percentage terms, in percentage terms. I don't see any negatives though, so that's interesting. Maybe it's up only. To unscale the data before making predictions, you will need to use the same scaler that you use to scale the data before training the model. Here's an example of how to unscale the data using standard scaler in scikit-learn. So let's do that. unscaling the data so we can see price predictions instead of percentage so let's paste that in there in this example x train is the data that you use to train the model and x test is the data on which you're making predictions the fit transform method is used to scale the data before training and the inverse transform method is used to unscale the data after making predictions cool so we go ahead import the standard scaler then we assume that you have already scaled the data before training the model okay and then we make the predictions on the new data and then we unscale the predictions and then making the new predictions let's go ahead and paste that in Oh, look at that. We got an error. Perfect. Perfect. I love errors because I learned so much with the errors. I get this error when running that code. I get this error when running the above code. It seems like the error is caused by the reshaping by the reshaping that was done before specifically the line X train X reshape extreme the reshaping has changed the shape of the data from a 472 to 471 which causes the error when causing to fit the scalar you can fix this by removing the reshaping step before fitting the scalar and reshaping the data after it's been scaled here's the corrected code okay so thank you for correcting the code i wish ChatGPT had a better memory but it's all good So where do I put that? So scalar, x train, x test. Okay, maybe right here. Let's try it again. Still get an error. I get this error now. I love working with this because it just, it forces you to learn so much. I get this error now. Here is the code I ran. Then let's go ahead and post the next code. And just let me know below if you want to see something specific here. Because I'm just kind of doing what I, <laughs> what I want to do in the day. It's indicating the input data, the scalar has a shape of blah, 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 which has three dimensions. But the scalar is expecting a two-dimension to fix this. You will need to reshape your data. 
to have two dimensions you can try reshaping okay so it's gonna reshape my data again this will reshape the data okay so I think I'm just gonna reshape the data right here reshape Maybe I should have done this before though, because the error was up here. Huh. I know this video is getting pretty long. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to delete this. And since we have the, the predictions just in percentage form instead, oh snap, what happened? We already trained it. X test. When I run this code, when I run the below code, I get this error code. Okay. And then here's the error. It's super weird because we just, it just worked, right? So this, this error is occurring because the shape of the data has passed to the model to predict does not match the shape of the input data the model was trained on. This is likely because the reshape operation in the previous code block was not done correctly. You can fix this by checking the shape of X test before passing it in. I'll just have to rewind this video and see where we got stuck because this was doing great before it predicted the next bar. You can see it went ahead and predicted this as well. Okay, well maybe I just don't need to run this again. Predictions equals model. What's down here? Let's go ahead and try to run this, MAE. Mean squared error of 0 0.002. Absolute error of 0 0.011. And then the R2 of 0.8. Zero nine, and then let's plot it. Okay, y pred equals model dot predict. Okay, so we get the R two squared, R two score, and let's see what it looks like compared to this R two score. This is a negative one. <laughs> this is actually a really good R two square, R two r2 score i think because it ranges from zero to one one indicating a perfect fit wow okay so this is a nice little model i think up here i just need to fix or rerun the training again but i'm not going to do that because i know it takes like 10 minutes so i wonder i just don't understand why it wouldn't work Maybe, I think I just need to run this again because we made those tweaks after but all of this worked and you can see that here we get the next bar 0.127 the next bar 0.129 and these are percentage terms so then this is one minute data so it's 0.12 percent on the one minute data and then the MSE mean squared error is very low. I don't know if that's good though. Is this a good mean squared error? It's difficult to say without knowing the context. You do know the context, B. Typically a lower the better, but what is considered good in general is quite low, which may indicate the model is performing well. However, it would be more informative to compare this MSC to the MSC of a baseline model. Okay, so if we look at our other model, our LSTM MSC, where is it? Did we do an MSC on this one? Yes, we did. It's 0 0.017. And this one is 0 0.000, so even better. Okay, and then the mean absolute error here. Let's see here. 
mean absolute error where you at 0.51 and this mean absolute error is 0 0.01 so it's even better and then this r2 score is 0.8 which is even better than the lscm as well so let's go ahead and see what it is though so where is it msc did i not do the r squared maybe oh here it is r squared minus so this looks great this looks like a great model i want to go ahead and just do one last thing for this code i get this error and this probably has something to do with me needing to retrain it again so if this doesn't work quickly i'm just i'm not going to do it here but i'll, I'll just put the working code in the boot camp let's see what it says though it looks like the issue is related to the shape of the data passed to the predict function. The model is expecting an input shape of batch size time steps features, but is receiving an input of shape, which is batch size features. You should reshape the X test data to match the expected input before passing in the predict function. You can try reshaping it like this X test equals X test. Okay. You should also blah, blah, blah. Show me in code. Please. Here's the code to plot the predicted values. X test as train. Okay, make predictions on test data. So we did that. Unscale the predictions. We did not do that part. Plot the predicted versus actual. Okay, maybe this will work. But I can fiddle around with this. I really think it's due to the fact that I, I did all that weird stuff in between. So I'll just make sure that it's all in there in the boot camp. Let's go ahead. I get this error now. I'm gonna try one more. It seems like the problem is with the shape of the input data, specifically the number of dimensions. The error message specifically mentions that the input is a vector size of size three, but the model is expecting a vector size of size two. You can try reshaping your input data before passing it to the predict function. For example, you can try reshaping X test data to have two dimensions instead of three. Okay. You should also check the shape of the data. I'm gonna try this one thing, but then I need to cut it because I know this video is getting super long. And I appreciate you sticking around with me here. Okay, so tuple out of range. I think I need to retrain this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retrain it. Uh, I think that I've shown you pretty much everything of this GRU model. So if you really want another video on the GRU, please do let me know. But other than that, I think this is super, a uh, super powerful one. And it looks like one of our best results yet. So um, that's pretty exciting. I'm gonna run all this again and then I'm just gonna put all the code inside of the bootcamp so you can have access to it whenever needed. I do invite you to come to our Discord as well. Um, you can get access to all of that in the link below. But I'm really excited for this model because it seems like it's gonna, well, it has done well. And I think I need to write some notes here to make sure to save the model. Because I wanna be able to use it in my algorithms now so this is let's run that and then let's retrain it this is going to take a while so interesting that it something's changed here anyways i'll fiddle around with it make sure the right codes inside the boot camp and i will see you there or inside the discord i hope you have a wonderful day and i will talk to you soon bye